Hi, uh, we are in module 6. Uh, this brings us to the last module for week 1. In this module, I am going to give you a very quick introduction to Verilog. So, uh, when we design circuits, we actually do it at different levels. So, I already mentioned this in uh, the first module when we talked about different levels of abstraction. So, you can look at uh, chip from the silicon level or from the transistor level. So, we know that these are things that you, so this is usually taught in a advanced course when you are in your third year you may get an elective. A transistor level design you might have done some of it probably you will do some more of this if you are in, uh, in the second year you will probably learn some of this in the third year. We are looking at uh, these levels right now. So, the, these three are the levels at which we will uh, we'll be dealing with in this course. So, there are different levels of abstraction in which you can look at basic problems. You can go and look at it from the silicon level this is for uh, chip designers who are at the closest level to silicon or the actual chip. So, th this is usually done by circuit designers, this is done by uh, logic designers or uh, system architects. So, uh, Verilog is essentially a language which can be useful for doing that. So, to motivate that I want to take a small example and show you how to do this in Verilog. So, for this we are going to use a digital circuit which is called a multiplexer. So, a multiplexer is the term that is used uh, when uh, for designing something in which you have multiple inputs and you have only one output. So, imagine for example, telephone exchanges. So, uh, there are several telephone lines that connect through the exchange and what, what they do actually is when there are multiple connections that are connected. So, it is not that you need that connection all the time. So, if, if you are making a phone call, you do not need this phone line to be uh, allotted to you all the time. Instead what they do is they, they do what is called multiplexing. Of the several inputs that are coming in, they will pick which one to uh, pass from input to the output. So, let us take this picture for example. So, this is the symbolic notation for what is called a multiplexer and this multiplexer is a simple multiplexer. It has two inputs A and B, it has one output. We want either A or B to be present at the output dependent on uh, the value of the select line. So, if the select line uh, will control whether A connects to output or B connects to output. So, this is called a multiplexer. So, at this point you do not know the logical description for the circuit. We just know that there, is, there are two inputs A and B and this is actually a standard symbol for this combinational block called multiplexer and based on input A and B and the value of select it uh, chooses one of these to be passed on. So, we will call this select line or SEL as a control input and the data inputs are A and B. So, this is a symbolic representation of a circuit. So, as an abstraction level this is a symbolic representation. So, it is useful to see these pictures because as humans we understand pictures slightly easily, but this is not something that a computer can work on. It is not something that you can manipulate uh, as a symbol. Uh, by the way this is a standard symbol for a multiplexer. Just like for AND gate and OR gate I showed you standard symbols, this is a standard symbol for a multiplexer. So, now I can write the description for this in English. We can say that if select is 0, so select is just a one line, so it is a control input, it has it can take two values, either it can take 0 or it can take 1. If select is 0, then choose A and pass it to output. If select is 1, choose B and pass it to output. So, this is an English way of English description of this uh, whatever design problem I gave you. So, I want one of A B to, to be passed on to output at a time and this is an English description of that. So, at this point if you notice uh, the description says if select is 0 pass A to output. We do not care whether A is 0 or 1, we want to pass whatever is the current value of A we want to pass it to output. And similarly, whenever select is 1 it does not matter whether B is 0 or 1, we want that value to be passed to the output. So, which means the multiplexer passes both zeros and 1s. So, this is an English text description of the same thing. So, this is a schematic or a symbol description of the uh, problem that I gave you, this is an English description of the problem that I gave you. Now, we can go and think about this in a truth table format. So, let us go and see what are the different inputs we have. We have select as an input, A as an input and B as an input. So, there are three inputs. If there are three inputs, there are eight combinations that are possible. So, we have those eight combinations listed here. And for these eight combinations, let us see how we get the output. So, we said if select is 0, 
A should appear in the output. So let us look at the first four rows. The first four rows has select equals 0 and if you notice the this part of the column this first four rows of this column are the copy of the first four rows of A. So what that means is when select is 0 we have copied A to output which is what we wanted. Similarly if you if select is 1 we want a copy of B in the output. So you can notice that in the lower half of the truth table uh, select is 1 and if you notice this this part of this column is copied on to output. So we have two parts the upper part is for select equals 0 and the lower part is for select equals 1. So this is a truth table way of describing this. We can write the same problem down as a truth table. So you can write it as symbol, you can write it in English or even if you write the truth table it, they are all the same. Finally you can also go and write it as a Boolean equation. So we said when select is 0 we want A and when select is 1 we want B. You can write it in English like in Boolean expression like this. So cell SEL complement means if SEL is 0 SEL complement is 1. So when select is 0 you and A, when select is 1 and B. So let us start with select SEL being 1. If, if SEL is 1 this term becomes 0 and B is passed to the output. If SEL is 0 then this term is 0 and this part becomes 1. So we have 1 and A which is out. So this is a Boolean expression that you can directly write. If select is 0 you can uh, and you can write it as select bar. So if I ask you this question if x is 0 then you can check x bar if x bar is 1 then x is 0. So it is the same thing here if select is 0 pass on a, a if select is 1 pass on b. So this is a boolean equation for the same design problem that I gave you. So this is a gate level description. So if you if you take the expression here and if you convert that to a circuit which is this is what you would have. So select you send it through an inverter you get select bar you and that with A you get temp 0 let us say I have just given a name here called temp 0 then you have select and it with B that gives you temp 1. So temp 0 or temp 1 gives us the output. So if you want to do this uh, so once you design it as a circuit like this on paper you should be able to go and do this using a breadboard also. So uh, in your labs probably you, will, you would have seen this already or uh, so in this course this online course does not have a lab associated with it directly. So I cannot make you do physical electrical connections and so on in this course but uh, probably you have this access in your uh, colleges itself. I suggest that you go to the labs and try this out. So you pick the components for inverter the AND gates and the OR gate and you can physically lay it out in your bread, in your breadboard or wherever. So you will require wires to connect to these gates and you will need wires to connect from these gates to this one and so on right. So if you are if you have to physically do it you need these physical wires. So you may take this as an external input you want to connect it to the input of a gate B again to in, input of the gate the output of these gates need wires to be connected to this and so on. So as a picture we can draw these pictures easily. But to design it, design it as an actual circuit that will work you need the physical components and you need the wires. So this line here is actually a wire everywhere you see lines they are actually wires in the real world. So this is another description for the same design. Finally I want to show you how to do the same thing in Verilog. So if you look at it as a circuit it takes three inputs A select and B and it has one output out. So this is actually uh, working Verilog code. This is Verilog uh, as a language. We have we have a working Verilog code. So what you do in uh, uh, in in the, in the language like Verilog is you specify what are all the inputs and what are all the outputs. So in this case, if you think of this as a black box circuit that is given to you, it would take three inputs and it would give one output. So you will see physically four pins that are hanging out of this black box. That's what you have here. You have four pins that are hanging out of the black box and we designate which are all inputs and which are all outputs. So as a human being if you look at the picture generally we associate 
left side to be the inputs and right side to be the output and so on. So if you want to write this for a computer to understand we need to explicitly say which are inputs and which are outputs that what that is what we have here. So input A, B and select output out we also need these two wires temporary wires uh, temp 1 and temp 0 and we need another wire called select bar. So we need another wire called select bar here. Now let us see how to get each of these uh, this whole circuit represented. So we have B and select you and that together B and select you and it together you will get the description for temp 1. So and B and select that gives you temp 1. So the meaning of this line we will get into the details later but so this is the output and these two are the inputs for this line. So and B and select to give temp 1, complement select to give select bar and A and select bar to give temp 0 or temp 0 and temp 1 to give out. So that is the description of this whole thing. So what we have here is we have so there should be another wire here called select bar wire select bar must be there. So once we have that uh, this code essentially says how to connect the wires together. So if you do not have the circuit if I give you just the logical description you should be able to come up with the circuit based on just the logical description. We will go into these details in a uh, we will we'll go into much more details later about this but I want you to sh just see how Verilog code looks like. So uh, this is a just a sample for how Verilog looks like. So what is Verilog? Verilog is a hardware description language also called HDLs. So HDL is a high level programming language and it is useful for modeling hardware. So if you have been in if you are in second year you probably have learned one or two languages by now programming languages you probably know C or C++ or Java or something like that. So these languages are not conducive for designing hardware. So we need hardware description languages that understand what hardware designers want not what software designers can do. So it is a high level language used to model hardware and HDL languages have special hardware related constructs. So they model digital systems really well and they do a fair amount of analog systems also nowadays but in the future you will probably have both analog and digital systems we, we should be able to describe it in a text based programming language and be able to realize circuits out of that. You can actually take the models that you build in Verilog and do what is called simulation. You can give them test inputs and see what is expected out of the out, uh, out of the circuit without actually uh, putting getting the real components and connecting them and so on. You can write Verilog code, you can give it all the test inputs and so on, do the design, verify the design first and then go and do the hardware for it. So you can do simulation, you can do what is called synthesis and test also. So given a Verilog description there are tools which can take that and actually give you a gate level description of how it is supposed to be. And this, uh, this language has been extended into system level also it is called system Verilog. So we will not teach system Verilog in this course, uh, I will teach basic Verilog for this course and maybe in the other uh, courses that you learn later you may end up learning system Verilog or maybe Verilog itself in more detail in a future course. So just remember that Verilog is a hardware description language and there are lots of things that are in hardware uh, hardware description languages which are different. First thing is in a hardware description language you have to model what is called concurrency. So if you have various gates in some sense all these gates are actually firing simultaneously. So if you write a C program line 1 uh, is executed before line 2 of the program, line 2 is executed before the line 3 of the program and so on there is an inherent sequential nature to the way in which we write C and C++ programs. However, in languages like Verilog they are inherently concurrent in nature they are very different the way they are written and the way they are conceived in fact. They also have constructs for modeling delays that are there in the real world. So any physical component has what is called an inertial delay. So if you have you cannot switch a wire from some 0 to 1 in instantaneously. So they, it takes its own time to switch let us say imagine a capacitor which is charging the charge does not happen immediately. So charging takes some time. So we can model such delays using Verilog. The syntax that you will see 
is fairly simple and you may even see similarity to other languages that you may already know. However, uh, we will try and keep this course self contained. So, I am not going to ask you to go and run somewhere else and learn some other language and come back. We will try and learn Verilog within the framework of this course itself. So, all we have so far is just a teaser for what Verilog looks like. Clearly, I will go into these details of how to write Verilog code for circuits. Once you are, once you know how to design circuits, then we can talk about how to write things in Verilog. So, this brings me to the end of uh, the week's lectures. We have modules 1 through 6. So, this week was slightly longer than wa uh, what would be usual. So, I, I think we probably have 2 and a half hours of video as opposed to 2 hours that we will see from next week onwards. So, there is lots of introductory material and so on. Some of these you do not have to memorize anything, you just know and appreciate that there is history of computing and then there are lots of facts and details that we have. So, one thing I would like you to do is take the homework exercises really seriously and you should try and do these exercises on your own. So, only when you do these things on your own, you will really understand the material. So, it is always tempting to go and search on Google or uh, talk to your friends and so on. So, one simple and serious advice that I will give you is go and do these exercises on your own. You will benefit a lot more by doing that than by borrowing your knowledge from others. So, uh, I am hoping that you are able to enjoy this week's lectures and uh, if you have anything please get back to us on the forums. So, slowly I will expect the forums to be very active in terms of discussions and so on. So, thank you very much and I will see you next week.